Hello YouTube, this is Justin the Snap-on Junkie and today I'm going to talk torque wrenches, okay? And some different things about torque wrenches that uh, you guys should know out there. I have two styles. I don't have the new uh, electronic ones, but I have two different styles of torque wrenches that I'd like to talk to you about and how to use them properly and things like that. So let's get into uh, kind of you know what I'm saying? Understanding about the bolts first that we're going to torque. So um, I have a couple different bolts up here. This is just really for demonstration purposes. So I have a grade 5 fastener and a grade 8 fastener. Now both of these are fine thread, okay? And um, here, let me get my chart out. Uh, so a 3 8 16 or 3 8 24 bolt, okay? The grade five, the maximum you could torque that um, is about 35 foot pounds, okay? And then the maximum you could torque a grade eight to is 50 foot pounds, okay? So that's about like bolt diameter and each bolt diameter will have a maximum amount of torque. Uh, so when you're torquing stuff down or whatever, or even using like uh, your electric impacts, you can kind of say, okay, uh, this bolt is not very much big. I don't need to ram it home with my electric impact if you don't feel like torquing them. So, okay, uh, this is the first style torque wrench that I have. It's just a regular uh, click style torque wrench, okay? And uh, how you would use this properly, okay, is first of all, you figure out what's your torque specs and all that stuff on there. If you're gonna use lube or if not, you're gonna use lube. Now, when you use lube, okay, uh, your, your torque value can go down a little bit. What I mean by that is because you're taking away some of the friction uh, that goes along with torquing. And when you want to use lube, when it gets really critical is like uh, rod bolts, uh, main cap bolts, and head bolts. Because you want to reduce the friction out of there so you get an even clamping surface. And that's really what... Uh, torquing a bolt does is, is you're clamping something down to a specification whatever that specification is how tight the engineer or the manufacturer wants the two services clamped together now the type of lube that I like to use and that I've used for years uh, because this is what we use when I used worked on the race cars is this stuff right here it's Detroit diesel international compound number two and we called it peanut butter and you can see that it kind of looks like a peanut butter consistency and we had really good success with using this type of lube so for just doing it so long I became in a habit of using that type of lube okay and I'll explain to you like uh, one time uh, a guy uh, was helping me build some short blocks and he used just regular like uh, assembly lube and then we went and mainlined the block uh, before you know so we could check our main line to check that the dimensions are correctly and they were all over the place and it took me a little bit to figure out uh, once I started looking at it that uh, I thought you know there's no way they would mess this up uh, they've never messed one up for me before but it was because he used the assembly lube and we were used to, you know, the machine shop used uh, torquing compound or peanut butter, if you will. And it threw the value off quite a bit because we weren't getting a consistent torque uh, down to replicate what they did. So that's just a little bit about that. So um, as you can see, I have no extension on here and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to adjust your torque wrench for uh, you know, if you have an extension on there or uh, a crow's feet or a torque adapter and kind of what the calculation is. So how you would use this torque wrench for is you pick your value, what you want to torque, okay? And then you're going to come and you want to get a nice consistent pull, if you will. You don't want to be real jerky with it. And then I'm going to show you the differences. So you would run it up till you get it tight. And then when you go to pull this, guys, you just want to kind of just be nice and easy with it till it clicks. And you don't want to keep pulling past it clicks because now you're over torquing it. And that would become more critical on like smaller type fasteners. So that's the proper way of doing it. 
Okay, now, you know what I'm saying? You guys have all seen these guys out here that just grab the torque wrench and they jerk it real fast. You know, and what that does is, is that I'm gonna dial this up to about 45 pounds. So that's uh, 10 pounds over what we were before. And I'm gonna see if this torque wrench moves just by jerking it. And you can see it does not move. So let's go up another 10 foot pounds. Still doesn't move. So we'll go up another 10. Okay, and that moved. So we're somewhere Let's try 60. So it's probably right around like 61, 62 foot pounds, maybe even a little bit more. But we changed that that much just by jerking on the thing. Okay? So let me reset this. And that's not the proper way of doing it. Let me reset this to 35 here. Okay, so we got this thing reset. Now let's talk about, uh, you know, I had another video uh, that I talked about crow's feet and I showed you that you could put your crow's feet on there and kind of how uh, that type of system works. So uh, when you put your crow's feet on there, you know, you're gonna be torquing it straight along. And sometimes they make torque adapters that stick up about this far, okay? so we would have to change our torque value a little bit to adjust for this calculation here. Now, I've looked up a couple different calculations, and um, as long as this distance is under about an inch and a half, it does not matter uh, about it being up here, uh, down here, if you had a torque or whatever. Uh, the torque value doesn't change. Now I did it on like a torque adapter is about an inch and three quarters from the center of your drive, uh, whatever drive you're using, so in this case we're using three eighths, to the center of your bolt. As long as that calculation is under an inch and a half, you do not have to take into consideration uh, your change in torque. And the farther that this gets away, you gotta remember, you're adding torque, so you have to go down on your torque wrench and for an inch and a half we'll just call it um, it said that I had to go down two foot pounds so if I wanted to torque this bolt to 35 foot pounds I would have to set my torque wrench okay to 33 foot pounds and then go ahead and torque it okay now another thing uh, that people that this is another thing that people may not understand is is that um, as long as you are centered okay on your torque wrench okay and that means you can have this long of an extension this long of an extension or this long of an extension the torque value does not change at the bolt whatsoever so uh, you can see here, what I'll do is I'll torque this up with a short one, okay? Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll change it to a long one and you will see that the, it doesn't really move, if you will. You may be out of frame. It takes a little bit more effort to get to that kind of torque because you got to hold it and all that type of stuff, but it does not change the value. So just remember if you're torquing with crow's feet or whatever that you can torque, okay, and it doesn't change your value because you're under about an inch and a half, okay? And that's about like that. Now let's talk about kind of how do you take care of these torque wrenches. Now, some people reset them to zero every time after they get done using them. 
I, I don't really uh, believe that that makes a big difference on accuracy. I believe if you left this at 30 foot pounds and threw it in your box and left it there for a week, yes, you are having tension on the spring. So I would say at the end of the day, you know, um, I always put the torque wrenches back to zero, okay? And then uh, also another thing about torque wrenches, um, why you would need probably different sizes and stuff like that and different things is because the more that you tighten this up, so the, the closer you get to the finish range, the more accurate the torque wrench will become. Um, it'll get closer. That's why when they sell them to you, they tell you it's within 2%. two, two percent. Okay, and uh, that is because you have the bottom throw of your torque wrench to the top throw of your torque wrench. Now maybe the electric ones are a little bit better than that. I don't know, I've never really used that style, which I would like to get that style because I do, uh, you know, rebuilding engines, diesel engines, there's a lot of torque to yield bolts. And what that means is, is that you torque it uh, to, uh, let's just say, 150 foot pounds and then you turn the fastener plus 60 degrees or 90 degrees or sometimes it's plus 180 and that's really stretching your bolt out and putting a lot of clamping force down on it. So that's just talking about this style torque wrench you know what I'm saying and how you get more accurate. Now the other style torque wrench that I have here is this style and this is more of an inch pounds torque wrench and what I use this for is setting my injectors uh, when you do overheads on a Cummins engine and that's why I have this. Most people don't have, have, you know, most new guys have never seen a torque wrench like this. So I thought I'd show you how to use this the best way that I know how. There's a couple different ways you can use it and all that stuff. So let me get you set up here so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So, okay. Now this style torque wrench is kind of like, a, they call it a dial style torque wrench. Okay, you know, it might be like an old beam style. So what you want to do is, is that it has this double thing and it kind of tells you uh, where you went to. Okay. And you can turn this dial. Okay. So let's say that I wanted to torque something to 75 inch pounds. Okay, you can do it like this where you have it zero. Okay, then you come up here. Okay, and we're only going to 75 inch pounds so it's not gonna turn very much. And what you can do is you just put a little bit of pressure on there till it gets to 75 inch pounds. And then your gauge goes back to zero. Okay, so that's how you would do that. So you would just keep running it up till it got to that point and that's your inch pounds, okay? Now another way you can set this up, okay, and the kind of the way that I like to use this torque wrench, this style torque wrench, is I take the dial and I go like in the reversing mechanism and I set this at 75 inch pounds, okay? And then I don't really worry about this dial too much okay and what I do is now the the zero is going to be what we're going to okay and you can see that we're set at 75 here and now I'm gonna turn this till I just get to zero bam you know and this is how I like to use this style torque wrench okay and then there's also uh, you know that's that style okay <clears throat> so that's how you use this style of torque wrench and that's just a way you know that I use them so that's my little story uh, or demonstration of how to use a torque wrench properly and uh, you know I didn't really want to get into when you should torque stuff and when you shouldn't torque stuff because it would just be drug out really long. I just thought I'd kind of show you, you know, just simple things and stuff like that. But also guys, uh, you know, if you uh, like my videos, always like, comment, and subscribe. Okay. And I also, uh, I made up some Snap-on Junkie stickers uh, for you guys out there. And I'm going to be selling these on my website 
Uh, they're going to be 250 shipped anywhere in the world, okay? And uh, that's probably going to be getting ready to... I'm going to try to get the website up and running today so I can take orders for these. But I thought it would be a fun way, you know, you guys could put this on your toolbox or whatever at where you work at. And it'd be kind of fun. And I also got sweatshirts coming, but they're like two weeks out. So thank you guys for watching my video today.